Good morning. Welcome to Embry Hills United Methodist Church. It is so good to see all of you here. Welcome back from your Thanksgiving break. I hope it was a wonderful time spent with friends and family and the time spent in gratitude, which is such a great posture to have in our world. Uh, there are a few changes that have happened around here in the last week, uh, one of which is all the beautiful decorations that have happened in our sanctuary. Huge thank you to all those who came yesterday to do that for us. Uh, it was a big group, and because that big group came, it was light work, and it was a lot of fun, and a very deep thank you to the worship committee, to Riley Dykert for all of her organization in that work to help make our sanctuary such a sacred space for this Advent season. Another change that has happened is actually in your bulletin. And I just am giving you a heads up on this because we are such creatures of habit. We have a different doxology that we are singing during the season of Advent. The doxology, you can see the words there are the words to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So we are all familiar with the song, I hope, but if not, you can follow along. You can see the words there, and that will be our doxology. So I'm just giving you a heads up that that's coming uh, later in our service. And of course, I also uh, want to turn your attention to our connection card there. That is such a wonderful way to let us know you are here, to let us know in what ways we can be in ministry together. There are so many opportunities that come up this time of year. It's a busy season. There are all kinds of opportunities that come up for us in a lot of areas in our life, but there are opportunities here at Embry Hills to grow in your faith, to give, and to give generously. And there are so many ways that you can be involved. So I want to encourage you to use that so we can be in partnership and be in ministry together in this season as we prepare our hearts for Christmas. Now, let us turn to God with a word of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we are so thankful to be in this space that is so beautifully adorned to remind us of your love, to remind us of your grace. We come to this season expectantly in hope, hoping for the peace that you have promised to know the joy of your love. We pray all these things in the name of the one we are waiting for, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to find a hymnal and turn to number 196 as we stand as you are able and sing together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 196.
please remain standing for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed found printed in your bulletin as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. And as you're being seated, I'd like to invite the McGarrah family up as we mark our time here this morning with the lighting of the Advent wreath. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad. Whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's path. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Now, if you would please turn and greet your neighbor with signs of peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the children come to the front for time on the steps. Hello. Oh, wow. What a wonderful group we have this morning. There you go. Thank you for joining. How are you doing this morning? Good? All right. Well, we are having a very special kind of Sunday today. Just look around. Do you see anything different? Christmas is coming but not quite yet because we are in the season where are we are looking forward for Christmas. Do you remember what is the time to get ready for the mystery of Christmas? Yes? Advent, 
Advent. That is correct. And what is very particular about Advent? What are the colors that we see? What is the most important color that we talked about? Yes? Purple. Purple. And you see some blue around? Yeah? And why is it so important? Because it's the spirit of Christmas. Because we are looking forward to the spirit of Christmas. Advent. Because Advent. We, are, we have arrived to the season of Advent. And it's very, very important as we look forward for Christmas to get our hearts ready to receive this great, great mystery. And let me tell you why it's so important to get ready. Who likes to celebrate your birthday? Like, whoa, yes, of course. Why? Because we are, it's a very special day where we celebrate our life. And we surround ourselves with what? What do you surround yourself when it's your birthday? Friends. Friends, family, cake. What else? Um, joy. With lots of joy. Sweets. Ooh, the sweetness of birthdays. Presents. Lots of presents, of course. That's, that's what we look forward to. Balloons. Oh, and lots of balloons. Some, some of us likes a lot of balloons. And the um, theme of your birthday? Oh, yeah. Right now, this is a trending thing. Theme. Confetti. Oh, you like confetti? Nice. Decoration. Lots of decoration. Music. Music, and we can go on and on and on. It's because birthdays are very, very special. But what if you get, would get to celebrate your birthday every single day? Would that be exciting? Yes. It seems like it would be really exciting. If you eat cake every day, you might throw up every day. Well, good point. If you eat cake every day, you might end up having a tummy ache or maybe even throw up. It wouldn't be exciting because it, it wouldn't be special. It wouldn't be so exciting because this, that wouldn't be something you really, really looking for, are looking forward to. It wouldn't, um, it would get boring because it's every day. And if it's every day, then it can get really boring. Very true. If it's every day, it could be very boring. And your family could be in your house and you might not have enough room. <laughs> That is so true, guys. You are thoughtful of everything. You know what? You are very true. And that's why getting ready and looking forward to something is very important in everyone's life. That is why Christmas is such a big deal. Because we only celebrate it once every year. And we set a season to get ready to receive this huge mystery, right? And for that, we see colors all around. And why is it that we're so looking forward to Christmas? Why is Christmas such a big deal anyway? Because it's when, because it's Jesus' birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. And Jesus, we celebrate him with, with uh, decorating that purple color because it's the color of royalty. We are expecting the coming of the newborn king, Right? So let's get ourselves ready. Let's get our, our hearts ready as we receive and get so close and closer and closer to this great mystery. Right? Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today celebrating the season of Advent with all the people that we love, our faith community. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the newborn king that was is and is yet to come. Amen. As we turn to our time of prayer this morning, I particularly think of Belita Holly, who this week had a procedure done, and she is doing quite well. She is staying with her daughter during her recovery. She has coveted your prayer. She is amazed at how well it is all gone. She was, um, I've talked to her several times this week and she is doing well. So thank you for your continued prayers for Valida and that she says she hopes she can be back soon. So we will get to see her again. 
Let us turn to God in prayer this morning. Holy and gracious God, we come into this space expectantly preparing for your arrival. We have come in the hope and in the truth of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose life gives us life. We pray that in this season, in a season that is marked by busyness and noise, closing things out for the year, expectantly looking to the next, all of the things that happen in this moment that we hear your still, small voice saying to us that you bring hope and you bring help. Lord God, we pray for all of the places around the world that do not know peace, Their lives are marked by stress and anxiety of the unknown, of not knowing what is to come that day, not knowing if there's going to be food or enough. We pray that in our own waiting, that you transform our hearts once again. You change out the hearts of stone for hearts of flesh, that we might spread your good news and your love to all that we meet. Help us to not be so distracted by the things of this world that we look past your creation, that we look past your people, that we look past our neighbor. You have told us time and again that you are coming, that your promises will be fulfilled. And so we expectantly wait. But we also open ourselves up to the possibility and trust that it happens in your time and in your way based on a bedrock of love. Lord God, where there is hurt, we pray for healing. We thank you for skilled hands of caregivers that nurse us through. We pray for upcoming procedures. We pray for upcoming stresses. We pray for upcoming life. That we feel and know your presence with us that goes before us and carries us through. Lord God, we pray all these things in the name and in the hope of your son, Jesus Christ, who comes to us in such an unexpected way. Who comes to us preaching love and forgiveness, offering us grace and overthrowing our hearts with love. We 
pray as his disciples. We pray as his called apostles. And we pray in the way that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for a reading of the gospel. This morning's reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. During the rule of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron. They were both righteous before God, blameless in their observance of all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant, and they both were very old. One day, Zechariah was serving as a priest before God because his priestly division was on duty. Following the customs of priestly service, he was chosen by lottery to go into the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense. All the people who gathered to worship were praying outside during this hour of incense offering. An angel from the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. The angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many people will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the Lord's eyes. He must not drink wine and liquor. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will bring many Israelites back to the Lord their God. He will go forth before the Lord, equipped with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children, and he will turn the disobedient to righteous patterns of thinking. He will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure of this? My wife and I are very old. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. I was sent to speak to you and bring this good news to you. Know this, what I have spoken will come true at the proper time. But because you didn't believe, you will remain silent, unable to speak until the day when these things happen. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they wondered why he was in the sanctuary for such a long time. When he came out, he was unable to speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he gestured to them and couldn't speak. When he completed the days of his priestly service, he returned home. Afterward, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. She kept to herself for five months, saying, This is the Lord's doing. He has shown his favor to me by removing my disgrace among other people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I learned something new this year, which happens enough to call it the work of the Holy Spirit, because being in the church and being a part of the church my whole life, you kind of recognize a lot of the stuff that happens around this time of year. But I learned something new this year about the word Advent. It is not just a season, it's also a descriptor word. It's a season that starts today, it's a season before Christmas, but coming from the Latin, it can mean visit. It specifically means that time of anticipation before a visit happens. And so throughout this season, for these four Sundays of Advent, the theme that we're going to be preaching on is all the visitations. Like we heard this morning when Gabriel came and visited Zechariah. We're going to hear about the angel visiting Mary. We're going to hear about Mary visiting Elizabeth. All of those visits that happen in these first few chapters 
of the Gospel of Luke. And when we're talking about visiting, it makes me think about hospitality. Because whenever at our house, when we have someone planning to come visit, there is a flurry of activity. We try to be prepared with places to sleep and clean sheets and towels. We try to have all of our usual mess kind of hidden and out of the way. We have bought food and we have prepared what we need to prepare. We have activities planned. We, have to, we want to be ready. We want to be ready for someone who's going to come visit. But hospitality also means being ready for unexpected visitors. Growing up as a kid, I lived in this great neighborhood while I was in elementary school, and we were all constantly going to each other's houses, playing video games at this one guy's house because he had all the best ones. That was the video game house. We played baseball at my house because the previous owners had put in a pitching mound. So that, I had the baseball house. We had basketball across the street because they had the flattest driveway. And so we were constantly visiting one another's house, and there was more than one time that I stayed for dinner or stayed over somewhere else when we hadn't planned it ahead of time. But I can remem always remember at my friend Matt's house, somehow they were always ready for me. So I began to think about this word Advent in this context, and it made me think, are we ready for a visit? Is there space in our hearts and in our lives, in our homes, or in our dreams, or in our aspirations, is there space for a visit? And what if that visitor is Jesus. So I began to look in Luke, looking at all the visitors, all in anticipation of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. And the question is, is that same question, are we ready for a visit? How are we doing at hospitality, both here and in our own lives? Because a visitor disrupts it. It disrupts our routine. It disrupts our traditions. But being hospitable to visitors, welcoming the stranger, is one of the oldest and most consistent commandments from God in the entirety of the Bible. Abraham and Sarah did it. Moses did it. The prophets talked about it, told us to be ready for it. Be ready when God shows up for a visit. Zechariah was not ready. And he was a priest. What being a priest meant was that he carried out all the duties of the temple. The priest was the one who offered the sacrifices and the prayers and made sure everything was done the correct way, that kind of thing. And then an angel comes for a visit. For someone who is as meticulous as he is about planning, this throws Zechariah for quite a loop. And it's quite understandable. Sometimes even the best news can come at an inconvenient time. I remember one time my friend won a contest. He had received airfare, a hotel room, and great seats to go see Atlanta United play Toronto. And so he called me and said, do you have a valid passport? And I had to say, no. And mine had expired. His wife's had to, plus the game was on a Saturday, and we were both preachers on a Wednesday. There wasn't time for us to get someone to fill in for both of us, so he had to call the contest people, and he said, you're going to have to give this to someone else. When he called, the person he talked to on the phone was incredulous and several times like, are you sure? Sometimes even the best news comes at an inconvenient time. And so we miss it. 
I don't know if preparing for visitors in our homes is ever convenient. It takes us breaking out of our routines. It means we're going to miss out on some of our commitments so that we can be hospitable and welcoming to someone else. Even when one of my best friends and his family were coming into town for a weekend, as the weekend was approaching and we had things to do and more stuff was put on the calendar, I even had the thought, God, I wish they had just gotten an Airbnb. It jars Zechariah when the angel shows up and Elizabeth when this visit happens. He cannot carry out his priestly duties anymore. His wife is scared and about what is happening to her and doesn't tell anyone for five months that she is pregnant, which is understandable. It's the same at the church. When we talk about hospitality things and that we are a warm and welcoming congregation, we are. But are we ready for folks to stay a while? Are we ready to put aside our own routines and traditions for someone else to come in who does things differently? In one of the first few weeks when we had just gotten to a new church, this was, gosh, 11, 12 years ago, when it was me, Meredith, and a toddler, we were talking with one of those church members who also had a young family, and she said, our lives are just too busy for new friends. Upon hearing that, I thought, I think I know why our church isn't growing. And then at another church, I started one of my workout groups with five guys in the congregation. And I told them, invite some people to come out and be a part of this. And they all kind of looked at each other and said, the only people I would know to invite are standing here already. I think I know why that church wasn't growing. Inviting people for a visit and being prepared for people to come visit is a huge disruption in our lives. It is inconvenient. And in a world that screams at the top of its lungs that convenience is a virtue, that a life of leisure is the ultimate expression of God's favor, getting ready for a visit or a visitor is countercultural. In this season of Advent, we are to prepare ourselves for a visitor. With songs we sing, with gifts we bring. That's why we decorate our sanctuary differently. So I want us to all this morning use our imaginations for just a little bit. I want all of us to think about a time when we were welcomed as a visitor. When you went to someone's house and stayed there with them. Not by the hospitality industry, but by a friend. What did they do that was so loving and how did it make you feel? So get that, get that memory in your heads. And then what if I told you that Jesus was coming to your house for a visit? I can imagine all kinds of reactions to this in my own life. I can imagine guilt being one of my emotions. Because this is Jesus and I would feel bad that I have anything more than what I need. I can imagine nervousness that Jesus is going to come in and be disappointed in me. I don't know what kind of food to have on hand. I would guess bread and wine, but he probably gets that wherever he goes. What bed is he going to stay in? What would we do? Archbishop Desmond Tutu once, when speaking to the professors at a prestigious school of theology, told them, he said, you know what your problem is? Said, I will tell you what it is. He said, you just don't have any idea how low God's standards are. They are very low. Very low indeed. He said, remember, you cannot 
do anything to make God love you more. And you cannot do anything to make God love you less. I'm guessing in our first scenario, when we were remembering what it felt like when we visited someone and they took care of us, it was probably because we loved each other and we relished the time we got to spend together. It wasn't anything that they planned. It wasn't tickets that they bought or sites they took us to see. It was their excitement at having us and our excitement to be with them. That's it. That's the friend who is coming over in Jesus. While we may be nervous and have very high standards for ourselves, Jesus just wants to be with us. With all of our faults and all of our fears and faux pas. Some good news about the visit. We've got some time to get prepared. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, what are we preparing for? If we are preparing to host a dignitary who will bring us great honor, that's one way. Or is it to welcome a friend? Who we may not have talked to in a while, who we may not have seen in a while, but has come to visit and staying at our house. But remember, we cannot do anything to make God love us more, and we cannot do anything to make God love us less. That's who's coming over. Let's be ready for it. Amen. As we continue our worship this morning with our morning offering, I invite our ushers and acolytes to come forward at this time. As we are in this season of all kinds of sales going on around us and named days and everything else, that is our call to generosity that we understand is a call from God. And so we pray for these gifts. We pray over these gifts that they may be given joyfully into the hands of our God, that miracles may happen in our world. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we are so thankful for all that you have given us, as we know that all that we have is from you. We pray in these gifts that you bless them and those who give them, that we might be your ambassadors and share your good news with all we meet. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.
Please remain standing and find the insert of your bulletin as we sing together our closing hymn, All Are Welcome. Insert of your bulletin. Let's sing together. Welcome indeed, and we are grateful for those of you who have taken the time to be here this morning with us in this space or the space of your own online. I'm going to share a few pieces of information about things coming up in the Advent season, but all of the information is found in our weekly source, which is the way we spread our regular communications weekly. So if you um, have any questions, that can be found online, on social media. We can get a hard copy to you. Also, there is some printed in the bulletin this morning or on the link from the online service. One is that you'll see the Advent Giving Trees are in the Narthex and also in the lobby upstairs in the Education Building. This is a tradition that is long-standing here at Embry Hills and a way for you to give back to organization in the community. This year, we will be um, we will be supporting Wellroot Family Services, formerly known as the United Methodist Children's Home. They have a new transitional living space in the Oakhurst neighborhood. 
for students who have aged out of the foster care system. And so what we will be doing as a congregation and anyone who is in our space and wants to participate is to provide them with the things that they need to make a home um, and to help them go work towards their independence. So there are ornaments on the trees that you can take for the items that are requested and there are instructions that are listed on paper beside the trees as well as if you prefer are not a shopper and you prefer to give another way there are instructions for that as well. Safe Sanctuary Training, um, the last Safe Sanctuary Training of the year will be on November 29th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Contact Linda Jimenez Abrams if you have any questions about that. Also, the Older Adult Lunch is happening on December 6th and reservations are needed by December 1st. And finally, there are no Sunday events happening today um, for the rest of this afternoon or evening, um, but a reminder that all of the midweek, midweek activities on Wednesday are back on the schedule as we get back in the swing of a very busy Advent season that hopefully will be filled with much joy. Clarence Jordan wrote interpretations of the Bible called the Cotton Patch Gospels. And in his Gospel of Luke, he describes what Emmanuel means. We sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel. He talked about what it means. He said, that's when Jesus decided to come in and stay a while. This season, I hope you get to know that Jesus is coming in and staying a while. Staying a while in our hearts and in our lives. And we need to share that news with all that we meet. Go in Christ's peace. Amen. Thank you. 